The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where wealth technology is simplified. With Australia's number one platform for overall satisfaction and value, you don't need to imagine. NetWealth is continually investing in new tools and platform features to optimize your staff productivity and to give you and your clients the best user experience. With our managed accounts functionality, bring new efficiency and scale to your investment operations. A world of technology awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Rated by Investment Trends number one for overall satisfaction by users from 2014 to 2022. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking all things content marketing with Claire Murphy, Director at Advant. So marketing, no matter the size of your practice or even the size of your email lists, content marketing is a central part of running a professional services business. And even if you're at a size where you can afford a dedicated marketing team member, how do you ensure scalability, consistency, and mitigate key person or talent risk? As Claire says, Advent is here to support practices so financial advisors, accountants, and mortgage brokers in marketing themselves professionally online, communicating with their clients, and building richer relationships with their clients. And they do that in conjunction with their tech platform, Advent Plus. Claire gives us a great case study of how Advent supported an advisor in going out on their own and the content marketing associated with that. So website from day one, an email list to the clients he was bringing across, et cetera. And we chat about AI and in particular how it can help with segmenting and ensuring what you're communicating to clients is relevant and personalized. I started by asking Claire what the oldest piece of tech she still owns is and whether she still uses it. So the oldest piece of tech um, took me a little bit to figure out, but I'm a bit of a hoarder. So it probably be all my old mobile phones. I think I've got all of my phones <laughs> still. Don't obviously use those, but the one that we use would be our TV. We um, realized this when we couldn't stream, we couldn't use KO, we couldn't use a few apps of a TV. But oh, wow. How old, how old is this TV? We might need a new one. So the oldest piece would be our TV that we're using. Mm. Yeah, nice. No, that's um, jeepers. That must be old. But I think the. <laughs> The beauty of the like a Google Chromecast or Amazon Fire Stick, like they tend to make those TVs just go and go, don't they? Yeah, you don't realise until you're like, oh, this didn't work. So time for a new TV, which we're loving at the moment. Got lots of great flexibility and we're able to watch all of the Olympic sports that we wanted oh, as, nice. we, as they came up. Perfect. Love it. And I guess obviously you've moved into the, the current decade with the television, but what about AI? Is there any maybe one or two ways you're using it personally or in your work life? Yeah. Well, personally, um, I suppose this gives away the stage of life I'm in. The baby monitor I found fascinating. Get a lot of notifications of if they've rolled over, if they've pulled something over their face, um, if something else has popped into the crib or fallen in so I found that really fascinating to start with and now all notifications are turned off that I don't really care they're all fine right. <laughs> um, but um, that's one thing personally I found um, really fascinating that could recognize and I'll let you know with that but more professionally um, mm-hmm. we've been playing with AI in terms of design I find that really really fascinating um, okay. for me which I suppose we'll talk about later um, I grew up around a family business in printing. So it was around design as it evolved. 
um, growing up and just seeing what programs can do now and how we're starting to use it is really fascinating. Cool. No, that's two really great examples. I think, yeah, the the baby monitor, that's sort of um, taking home security to the next level. And I think it's it's crazy um, how it's to the point where it's just too, there's too much going on that you've just silenced the notifications. I think that's, that is um, very funny. And yeah, the design aspect of AI, I think is something that's not maybe talked about so much. We're all about the sort of gen AI from a, a content or written or spoken word perspective, but I think that's really cool to dive into as we progress through today's discussion. So, yeah, once again, thank you for sharing that. And I guess before we jump into all things Advant, I'd love to know a little bit about your professional origin story there, Claire. I know we heard a little bit just before, a little snippet. And, yeah, so what's – and then what's led you to become, I guess, director of Advant? Yeah. Um, So I suppose my professional story, as I would to there, started – before I started working. Um, so my family, so my grandfather um, acquired a printing, printing firm many years ago, about 50 years ago. He still works today. I think he'll keep oh, working wow. until he physically can't, um, keeps his brain active. But um, just um, so the family was really connected with communication right from a print perspective. And my dad and uncles then went to work with him. And from there went out into publishing so for me personally I started I studied marketing and management at uni and then came into the family business working in printing and publishing in the hard lean sales which if you can sell printing pretty tough (laughs) at the end of the line um really and to manage that process um and from there we acquired Advan so about 10 years ago we acquired Advan and we found it to be a really unique company that had such great potential and um, really unique in terms of how content is published and distributed. And we also, what really appealed to me personally is um, publishing financial content or educational content to assist the financial literacy has a real impact not just on, I suppose, our clients, financial, which are largely financial advisors and helping their business, but also the clients of these practices, so the families, the individuals, helping them achieve their dreams. So we speak about this at work. Of it's just a really powerful while we're here helping you know, practices build their businesses, but also helping Australians achieve the lifestyles they want to achieve. Um, so that's so was my short history um, through publishing and into the financial service industry. Awesome. No, that's thank you for sharing that. I think that's really, it honestly really reflects in, I was having a look at your website just before, the values of the business as well. Like especially, I think the growth value, that makes a lot more sense now. Like it's based on, as it says, mutual success. So when your clients succeed and your employees grow, we grow. So everyone wins. I think that's fantastic. And yeah, uh, another one there about efficiency. So obsessed with finding the best ways to make life easier for our clients. So actually, yeah, I didn't think about um, I guess content marketing from that perspective of having a real impact on the actual readers. It's I've always sort of thought about like you know everything's a lead funnel, etc. All about awareness. So I think that's a fantastic angle. Yeah, we try and focus on that um, in client of yeah how that how what we produce helps not only our clients but how it's received. So how it works yeah. there, not only your business but your client. Love it. And I guess sort of progressing into Advant then, so what, what would you say you do? And who do you help and what are the problems that you're solving? So we believe that marketing shouldn't be a headache. So Advant is here to support practices in marketing themselves professionally online, communicating with their clients and building richer relationships with their clients. Um, as an outsourced marketing um, firm, we have professionals and experts in their separate areas, whether that's design, content production, web production, that make you look professional um, and make processes within your business efficient. So we know marketing, everyone knows marketing is important, particularly for small businesses, which most practices um, fall into that category. But it is something that falls down on the too hard. It's too hard. Um, It takes too long. It's something that's in the back of your mind. You know that you should be doing, but don't get around to it. No one's going to tell you off if you don't do it. Um, so we want to make it really, really easy so that advice firms can easily communicate with their clients regularly, efficiently, and also meaningfully. Because if you're not communicating with your clients in a meaningful way, they're going to switch off. 
So it's having relevant content, speaking to them on their terms in a language that is consistent with your brand and your voice because you have the relationship with your client. It's also having that professional place online where people can come and find you, communicate with you and refer on. Perfect. Yeah. So in terms of our services, we're helping us at three sort of main areas. So that would be with your content, email content, your websites, and also social content. Amazing. No, that sounds fantastic. I guess the, the next question would be, how do you do that? Like, how do you typically work with a business? Um, you know, the typical touch points, do you do you integrate into how they operate, like whether it's their CRM or their particular email lists or their, you know, segments of clients? Are businesses providing their own content? How does that sort of look? Yeah. So we try to make it really easy and affordable for practices. Um, we strive to be a key element of your tech stack. So we don't try and be necessarily the end-to-end um, mm-hmm. of your marketing technology piece. Um, we want to integrate seamlessly with the implications that are already tried and tested in your practice, whether that's your CRM, your social channels, um, other platforms that you're using behind the scenes. So um, what we do, we help practices for those that want a fully outsourced and automated service and um, want their emails taken off their hands or email communications taken off their hands, they want their website maintained for them or their social media automated for them, to practices who really want a hands-on approach, so who may largely just need support with their content and content production. So we try to help practices at both ends of that scale. Um, so in terms of how we do that, most, well, all of our services are centred around that content piece. We believe the content is really key to your marketing. It's how you present yourself, how you communicate with your clients, how you build that relationship, whether that's across your website, your social, or your email communications um, from there. So we provide written content, digital digital content, video content, and visual pieces as well to help you communicate really effectively with different demographics and also across different mediums um, in there. So the content that we produce, we produce not only for content that's financial for financial advice practices, but also mm-hmm. accounting and mortgage broking practices as well. So it makes us a little bit different in that we can cater to a really holistic practice that needs to communicate across a wide variety of services on there. And so the content that we produce, we do have a team of financial journalists, and it does take a bit for us to break in a new writer. We'd like to say, yes. Um, the voice is really particular, um, as you'd appreciate. Uh, in fact, with it, it's the voice of the advisor. It's a considered tone. We don't want it too formal, but it also needs to be something that's compliant so you're not providing advice in the content that we're producing in there. So particularly when it comes to market-related events, we don't want something that belongs. It's explaining what's happening and come and speak, encouraging your clients to come and speak to you. Um, in there. So you want to be that voice of reason rather than sort of adding to the noise that's already out there in all the news feeds and newspapers um, that people are reading more broadly in there. So the content being the centre of the piece that we um, provide for advice practices, and we do we do this through our platform, Avant Plus. So Avant Plus is our um, a platform that we have built and maintain internally. And the developer's really, really proud of it. He's worked on it since he started um, with us. He started similar time to me 10 years ago. And um, it's been built with advice practices in mind um, to assist them in both creating their communications and distributing it, um, whether that's email communications or social content. So we publish new content within the platform, be that articles, videos, social posts, and ready for you to be able to use. So as we mentioned before, with practices that mm-hmm. weren't done for them, we publish a newsletter and regular communications for you. We can even send it out to client bases as well. So some people that want it completely taken out to their, off their hands. And to those who want to utilize some of our content, add in their own content, adjust the voice of ours so it's consistent with their broader marketing piece, um, and we'll distribute that out from the platform. So about Plus as well in terms of those how it fits with your tech stack is we've designed it in a way that it is a piece with the cog and it works with other platforms that you may already be utilizing. So you can upload your own client list into the platform from your CRM 
um, and send it out through the platform itself. Um, you can also, you do have the ability, you can upload um, quite a few practices, upload a BCC for their CRM so it can shoot through a copy of the email oh, of to their CRM so it could be like your exit plan. Um, so then you do have that recorded against your client file as well. Cool. And um, we help also integrate it with management so you can push any communication piece that you've created and the content pieces that you've leveraged from Advanced Plus straight through to MailChimp or fully formatted, ready for you to send out. Um, we've found a lot of practices utilize it just for the broader marketing piece. So we work seamlessly with that. And for those that don't want to upload their list into the platform or utilize MailChimp, you can also download the HTML file of the email so you can use any marketing platform. Yeah, really, wow. really easy for you to leverage um, in there. So in terms of the email, really try and be flexible. And if there are other platforms, happy to integrate and work with those and work with practices. We have done that with specific platforms in there and um, I suppose more broadly in terms of an integrated approach to your marketing your newsletters you can also integrate your social channels and a WordPress website so you can make one document distribute in many ways really effectively and efficiently and um, which means practices jump in have their newsletters made for them and their updates done and push that out to multiple channels really easy to do it means it gets done as well <laughs> it's not easy it doesn't tend to happen uh, I don't know about you guys, <laughs> that's something that sort of unfortunately happens in my life. It's not easy. It doesn't always happen. Yeah, so we try and help out in that way. Amazing. No, that's um, it sounds incredibly flexible. And as you mentioned, at a bare minimum, you've got this library of content that you can tap into and and you know take and use and and you know modify it if you want to, etc. But all the way through to like a fully integrated process, as you mentioned there, in terms of, um, for example, that MailChimp integration. Yeah, that is really cool, and and the the sort of surprise and delight of being able to you know push those um, correspondence into your CRM, whether that's Xplan or something else, to make sure you've got that complete view of the client, so it's not sort of marketing's over here, and you know our client sort of day to day manual emails are over there. I think that's really really cool, and I think too, like you mentioned before, around no one is telling you off for not marketing. Do you think just having at the bare minimum, um, an engagement with Advant is, is I guess, that um, accountability or like, hey, we need to be thinking about this at least on a, I don't know, weekly basis rather than um, like you're just there. But also you've got the, yeah. the you know, the key person risk or that reliance on sort of in-house content marketing is at the very least greatly reduced. Yeah, definitely. And um, our prompts when new content's available where a lot of practices get them up and moving. <laughs> um, and it is, whether that's the regular comms or whether it's there's been a market event or legislation changes, it's it's something that's there and ready for you to be able to easily access and make available to your clients. And um, it's not only, I suppose, as a prompt to get you communicating with your clients or to assist you as communicating with your clients more frequently, but having that content ready-made vetted by compliance teams with quite a few licensees that we work with, it's there ready for you to go. You don't have that hold up of I've got to send it to compliance and wait for a week and then yeah. maybe it's still relevant, maybe it's not. So it's um, And it's something that is not dependent necessarily on the advisor themselves in actioning. It can be supported by the team. Yeah. Imagine yeah, reducing so, the... Yeah the bottleneck at a very at a bare minimum as well. That's fantastic. I mean, just sort of on that and, and moving into maybe some sort of real world or practical examples, have you got maybe a case study or an example of how I guess your content marketing suite has made a real difference to the marketing efforts of a business? Yeah, so um one of our clients I thought of um one of our clients that we worked really closely with, Chris from Wealth Investors, we really helped him. He um sort of went out on his own a few years ago. And as you can appreciate, when you're starting a new business and your own business, it's really overwhelming. Um, of where do I start with my marketing? How do I get myself out there? And how do I communicate with my existing clients just to keep them happy? Um, so the first piece of work we did with him was assisting him with his website, um, which for a lot of practices, and I, I, I know for us too, website, it's really overwhelming. Where do you start? It's a bit of a um, can of worms where you start working on it and yeah. in terms of all the content, particularly for somebody starting out. So we assisted him with his website, made sure that we 
brought his voice through, really had that target audience of who his clients are, how he's going to help them and what problems he's solving um, for his particular clients. So assisted him with his site, got that up and running really, really quickly, sort of a, a short version, and then helped him with a bit of a broader website just so he had that visibility online. And for him, it was really important to communicate quickly with his existing clients that he was bringing across about his value, what service he provide, how he's going to work with them and how he's going to continue working with them and provide that regular update. So for him, it started off as a process of utilizing a lot of our ready-made content and has now now work to add him his own personalized pieces as well. So he customizes the content, adds in um, articles that are relevant to his clients, case uh, case studies and um, client testimonials in there as well. So he's really gone from how do I, where do I start my communication piece to having his website, having um, a communication plan and a process that will help him continue to communicate regularly with his clients and linking both his website with his communication so that he's always starts updated with regular articles. It's nice and refresh. It's got topical pieces on there um, and makes him or assists him looking really professional to his clients. He wants yeah. a consistent message, his brand looking really great and um, that same voice coming across his marketing element. Amazing. That's fantastic and that is yeah, a great example of, I guess that you know day one online presence, and it's not a blank canvas. That's that is amazing, and um, we'll p- definitely put a link to the was it Wealth Investors was the name of the business. Yeah, perfect. Into our show notes, so everyone can have a look at that. And yeah, that's that's a great example of I guess a hybrid approach as well in terms of him being able to tap into your content and then also put his own spin on it and also go his own way and just probably just make it feel a lot more approachable to go out on his own and start to focus on on um, you know the things that are important to him and really just get the comparative comparative advantage when it comes to his marketing efforts. That's really great. I guess sort of changing tune to generative AI if we can, do you do you think Gen AI is maybe changing the way that we communicate with our clients or the way that we produce content marketing? Quite definitely. And it's really exciting. <laughs> There's so many changes happening and at the moment it's happening so quickly that the quality and the frequency that we can produce our communication pieces, it, it's never been easier. Um, and I think the key areas I find really interesting, particularly in this advice space, is I suppose your data insights of more effectively segmenting your clients knowing your yep. client's preferences and some behavioural trends, um, that content generation that um, you touched on there. So whether that's your articles, whether it's the design component as well, uh, whether it's producing content for webinars as well, um, that bigger piece of how do I build a framework um, from there. Um, as I mentioned, the design. So we, we've been using that quite a bit in our studio. Just even the one thing I mentioned earlier, just photoshopping. The amount of time and skill, I, I'm not saying the design is as, as much skill now, but the, the skill and the time in extending an image and adding in multiplying areas of an image now can be done in seconds. And it looks really, really very good. You can't play. Um, but in saying that, by speaking to a lot of practices, there's the perception that AI will will do it all for you. Um, so you, and and it, at the moment, for now anyway, it's not the case. You really do need to be involved, so you do need to know, have a really clear idea as to what um, what you're wanting. If hypothetically you're wanting to produce an article, and um, you've got to have a really clear brief as to what content you're wanting to produce, the voice, the audience, um, and also with your compliance hat, embedding it, editing it afterwards, making sure it is appropriate to send to your clients. So it's not something you can just type in a prompt and make sure, and it will spit out something perfect for you first time. And it's something that you need to learn and develop your pipes so it is relevant for your clients um, in there. So it does need that, particularly at the moment, that human element and that monitoring and management. So you get really good targeted pieces that are still, they still sound like you if you want it to still sound like it's coming from you. But I think it's a really exciting space that's going to mean we're communicating more effectively with our clients. We're reaching them 
with content that's relevant to them, that's speaking their language, that's not bombarding them with like broader communication pieces. I'm with you. I'm, I think um, it's a great example of you've just given a great case study of how you as a business has been able to help um, you know, wealth investors get up and running whilst using your content, et cetera, where if someone wasn't aware of the business, they could easily go, I'm going to outsource this all to AI, but it's so clear that it needs to be used as a thought partner and not as something that's going to fix everything and be right first time. And I think the examples of being able to, um, I guess, craft your message based on your segments is a really, I think that's so powerful. I mean, just on segmenting, do you, like how important is that, do you think, in terms of your client base? And have you got any, I mean, examples of good segmentation maybe? Yeah, so segmentation, I think, in a perfect world, and I say in a perfect world because practice it, not everyone's data is perfect. No yeah. everyone has a time to segment um, in there and it's not all up to tape. But in a perfect world, having your client segmented gives you it, its knowledge and its power. And it means that you can really be targeting and how you're communicating with them. Um, we're so inundated with messages at the moment that if it's not relevant, you don't look at it. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean the whole thing's not relevant. The first article might not be relevant. The first headline is like, oh, there's enough for me. I'm going to read it. Everyone's so busy um, that having really targeted messages is key at the moment for engagement. And to do that, you need to be able to target your clients. Um, so in a perfect world, where the, the, the more granular you can get, the better. So whether that's just by their demographics, your client demographics, that's who they are now. You also want to know what they're going to be looking towards and what they're going to be needing and anticipating their needs. So the services that you're offering now and also the things that they've expressed interest in or what they're looking towards um, is also something that I'd be looking at segmenting as well. I know they're really loose big groupings, but if you're targeting it, if you're segmenting based on who your client is now and their demographics, you can serve up content that's relevant to who they are now and what their financial situation is, but also how do you communicate and how can you easily segment them and target them for what they're going to need in the yeah. future in the next five years and um, what to get them thinking about as well so they can come to you and ask you those questions of, hey, we're thinking about, you know, taking off in the next couple of years for a year and how do we plan and structure this or we're looking at retiring or working um, working fewer hours, how do we do that? Um, it's sort of anticipating those needs of your clients and you can do that with really good data and that segmentation yep. of your data. Yeah, I love it. And I think I'm just trying to think of one example might be as you gave before around sort of market events and we all know that as a compliance requirement, every client needs a risk profile. So it's not something where sure. you know that that data is going to be, I don't know, 40, 50% complete, but it, it should mean in theory that everyone has that assigned and that would, my understanding, would be a great starting point for how you communicate differently to those different risk profiles, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So I guess, yeah, we're talking about segmentation and obviously AI, and I'm really sort of interested in learning your thoughts on how you see content marketing in particular evolving for professional services. So you mentioned covering that um, sort of financial professionals, so financial planning, accounting, mortgage brokers, et cetera. But yeah, how do you see content marketing evolving for that professional professions over the next maybe two to three years? Three to three years, I'm not sure if there's going to be, I suppose we're going to work back a little bit of where we are. All right, let's extrapolate but, then. Um, yep. I think, <laughs> no, I think we're going to get, um, in terms of um, the services that we're offering, we're um, trying to, but across that professional services, the delineation between accounting, advice, broking is becoming blurrier, um, I suppose, with mm -hmm. everything. It all sort of relates um, in terms of your financial well-being and um, financial security and aspirations there. So how you're communicating with your clients, I'd be hoping that we're starting to get a bit more um, a bit more targeted. So we do have more – we have the ability to collect more data on our clients. So we were just talking about segmentation. And I think we're going – be hoping in financial services we're starting to use that data more effectively to be able to communicate with our clients and able to also tap into the aspirations rather than these are the these are the services. These are our 
nuts and bolts and our tools that we use to help you with your finances. It's more going to be how, what value we're providing with these tools um, because we all want to be looked after. And that's um, something that advice we're getting a lot better at communicating. And I think that's going to continue to improve over the next couple of years. Yep. No, I'm totally with you. And I think it's, it is so clear that uh, financial planning, maybe historically, not so much today as you're mentioning, getting better at it is really bad at like telling people how we help and the value that we provide, especially when you've got lots of clients asking, you know, financial planning questions to their mortgage broker or their accountant. And maybe yeah. that's a broad brush approach in terms of how all of those <laughs> professions are marketing their their services, but it's just so clear that we need to do better there. Um, it's a great example. I mean, once we're now pushing out this content, whether that's on a regular basis or not and, you know, different platforms, have you got any ways or things that we should be thinking about when we're trying to measure the effectiveness of content, like the engagement or the ROI? Any tips there? Is it even important? I'd say it's really important. Um, I suppose for us as a business that produce content, we're really focused on what's what's being consumed and what's being um, shared yep. by your clients. So for us, we measure what our clients read as well as what our client clients read um, so that we're producing the right kind of cl- uh, right kind of content as appealing to both advice practices and to their clients. Um, I'd be recommending at a minimum, uh, again, this is a perfect world because we know, I know it's, everyone's time poor um, and don't, often have a dedicated marketing resource within a practice, but at a minimum, looking at who's actually reading your content, um, what's popular, so what's being clicked on, um, what's being shared, what's if they're looking at things multiple times, um, if there's delays in what they're looking at and coming back to it, and reporting back on that as to, it might be surprising, we find this early more with accountants. I think there's a bit of a difference between what you think clients want and what clients actually want. And as I've just spoke about there, it's that value piece of they want to know not necessarily how you're doing something, but they want to know the results of what you're doing. Yeah. And that I'd be checking in just to make sure whether that's through your email, through your web or your social of that people are actually what they're actually looking at and um, what they're sharing and um, really thinking quite clearly about what you're wanting to communicate and how that sort of impacts your future marketing aspects. Yep. No, great points there. And I think it's one of the things I didn't think about is as a business that's pumping out that content and seeing um, your clients send out to their clients, you're getting that data back at scale so you can actually see how it is performing. And it means you can, I guess, if you've got, you know, one practice trying to do it themselves, they might have one good month of open rates or click-through rates, but then... How do you then compare that about something else? Do you then go for that strategy again? Did you just have, is it a one-off? Like you've got that data to extrapolate and to then, I guess, um, double down on content that works, right? Mm, definitely. And it's, you can get really technical, but um, yeah. because we're, all, we're all simple creatures <laughs> uh, when it comes down to it. And we're slightly, uh, that like safe, but we're almost selfish creatures. It's it's what's in it. Okay. So the content that, um, if there's super changes of like, okay, how can I boost my super? Always really popular. Or if the markets have moved again, it's like, oh gosh, how does that impact my, you know, my investment portfolio, my finances? That's always really popular. They're sort of the topics that really resonate with clients. So what's going to have a quick direct impact on their on their finances, um, on there? Yeah. Which is yeah, I'm with you. Not, not surprising. <laughs> Oh, definitely. And you mentioned um, we're simple creatures. Just on that, like what are you, or extrapolating on what you just said there, are there any, you know, what are you seeing as the types of content that perform best? I'm just thinking about sort of YouTube thumbnails as, you know, likening them to email subject lines where it's like, I don't know, we had a great day in brackets, police called sort of thing in terms of shock factor. I've got to watch this. Um, yeah, any, yeah. Any sort of tips there on types of content? Yeah. And, um- I use my accountants as an example. Most accountants are a little bit different to advisors in how they communicate. Um, But uh, my accountants, when they moved across, they they were doing um, their newsletters in Word documents and send them out. And um, so we digitized them and they look fantastic now. But um, one aspect that they used to have in their newsletter was 
sporting tips of whatever's happening, whether it was oh, yeah. or AFL or tennis, what they're tipping, restaurant reviews, movie reviews. So it's something that's a bit different for an accountant, but it really um, gave you an insight into personalities in the practice um, because they're numbers guys. They speak about numbers, but it's really nice to see who they are, have that connection. And I think a lot of um, practices forget that clients come to see you. They've got a relationship with you. It's a really intimate relationship where they're sharing their financial successes, financial failures, their goals and aspirations for the future, and they want to know who you are. So that's something, while it's not content that we're we're necessarily producing for you, Hmm. that's quite often the most popular content that's being produced is that content that builds that relationship that you've got with your clients. Um, in them, but in terms of I suppose content that wits at all with would be that topical content, um, yeah. which is around your market movements, what's happening, why things are happening, um, superannuation changes to legislation, if things have you know happened in the media interpretation um, as well, just to provide that calming voice in there as well. It's really popular, but. It's adding that personalized voice um, and keeping that relationship growing between you and your clients. It does ultimately does really well. And that's why some of the lifestyle pieces um, do perform really mm. well as well. But it's appealing to people's interests rather than just finances. Oh, definitely. And I think you've just really opened my eyes there when it comes to like mentioning that you can fully outsource uh, the marketing or the content marketing to Advant. But what you've clearly articulated there is, you know, don't worry about the financial content or the market movements or the reg changes. We've got that covered. And then you as a practice can focus on the personal stuff that we'll never be able to do at scale for your business. So whether that's inserting that into the last part of the email or whatever form you're using, I think that's a great way to, um, I guess, to, as you mentioned, try and get content that performs best and it's that becomes incredibly personalized and, yeah, very, very cool. So I guess before we sort of close out, today, Claire. I've had a a great, um, it's been a great discussion. So thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you want to add in terms of the future of Advent or anything we've missed or or what you're working on? Um, Yeah. So it's always, it's sort of a great space to be in marketing for financial advice. I've got marketing at the moment, there's so many changes and the way that we're communicating is really, really exciting. So there's always something new (laughs) to attack me um, that we're able to support um, practices where what we're looking at, I suppose, is how do we help practices on scale um, building out some of your client journeys. So how do we – we found a lot of practices really struggle, I suppose, with um, onboarding, whether that's even just as simple as your first client, like a, a client meeting, um, and then following on from that. There is we've, – we've heard from quite a few of our clients that we're getting all these meetings but we're not necessarily converting them or following up well and um, how do we do that if it's not now that the time to – now's not the right time to provide the advice for them. How do we maintain that relationship and provide a good um, impression? So really helping um, with some of those client journeys, with connecting that web element with your email communications and social, just having those touch points with your clients on there. Um, so that's one thing that we're working on with closely with practices for next year and helping them in that aspect. And I suppose what we're also trying to help is a lot of practices aren't maximizing the impact that Google can have on their business as well. It sounds like a really, okay. really simple thing. Um, mm-hmm. But just assisting practices leverage the capacity um, of your Google, your business, whether that's just with your reviews and the SEO, just so that you can be found online. Um, you've got um, a simple campaign that's asking for reviews and has that um, word of mouth really visible so people, so new people to be able to vet you, um, they come and speak to you and book that appointment. Um, on there, so building out those campaigns to assist people to leverage um, tools that are already available to them, but they're not maximizing. Yeah, no, amazing. That's really exciting, and I think um, as you alluded to before, around the sort of client journey. So, for example, new client email is it is it a matter of like obviously you've got your email templates in there, but a matter of providing automation where it's like maybe client didn't respond in two days, we'll now send this one to see if anything changes, etc. Yeah, so providing that automated, that efficient process so that you're able to maximize any of those prospects coming in and yes. so you're capturing as many of those as possible. Yeah. 
in Amazing. That. And as we sort of talked about before in terms of notifications flying everywhere, if the content's not relevant or, you know, speaking to us, we're going to, we, we might miss it or just not open it. So it becomes even more important, right, to be making sure we're um, trying to get that message through maybe more than once to try and um, make sure we capitalize on, on clients that are wanting to work with us and at a time that suits yeah, them as well. Work. Fantastic. Claire, thank you so much for your time. Um, what's the best way for someone if they want to reach out to you or Advent to progress the conversation? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can simply go to our website, so advent.com.au, and you can book a meeting <laughs> on Ooh. there. And nice. um, otherwise, you can give us a call. Um, the team's always there to have a chat, whether it's just whether it's about our services or just um, try to improve your marketing that you're currently doing. So giving us the call, which is 03-9416-0655. And we can help out. Always happy to have a chat. Amazing. Claire, thank you so much. No problems. Thanks, Patrick.